In this video series, we're going to be talking about ransom and fishing. The two are as related as hunger and the desire to eat. We're going to talk about detection. Uh, mostly the videos are going to be around detection using QReader. We're going to be talking about sore remediation. Okay, Once you have detected, how do you do the cleanup? So we're going to be starting by talking about the different vectors involved in it and it's not only email but also RDP. There's a lot of instances of RDP vulnerabilities being exploited and that's what we will cover in this video, in this initial video. But we're going to be talking about what we want is uh, offenses to be fired when a ransomware or a phishing is actually detected and there's a lot that can be done on that and for that we're going to be talking extensively about the rules in QReader that will enable to do that. Then we are going to be talking in another video about Thread Intel. How do you beef up your Thread Intel sources so QReader is ready for that detection? Another video will be talking about the different endpoints and the logs that you need to actually successfully detect uh, phishing. And I'm going to be going between the demonstrations and the whiteboard as well. And we're going to be filling this up. Uh, with all the good stuff. And finally, we are going to be talking about the sore uh, remediation. So let's get started with the vectors. The first one is, of course, email. And, and mm, the rules that we will be looking at later uh, all work with, uh, with those. Uh, one obvious thing that you need to do is to make sure that your mail servers, the logs you get, the, the logs you get from those mail servers are registered in your system in the right building block or reference set as the email server. Uh, but the, the vector we're going to be covering in this video is RDP. There's, a, as I said before, lots of vulnerabilities and Microsoft keep patching. Every time I use my RDP, I see that there's a new update and things that have been fixed. But, you know, there is a fact on RDP. If I want to detect RDP, the port that is being used is 3389. And for that, you have something in QReader that is extremely valuable, which are flows. Let's actually see that in action. Here is my home network. I have the PFSense uh, and it's sending the flows into my curator. I'm hiding, I shorten the column for songs and destination IP to protect my IPRs in here. So we see some Chinese stuff, some Italian stuff. What is actually going on? Well, if I'm looking just for specific uh, RDP and I want to investigate for RDP, all I need to do is put a filter that says the source or destination port, this one here, is, you guessed it, 3389. Oops, I didn't type there, 3389. So I add that filter and I can go back, for example, seven days. And we see that there is uh, some interesting traffic in here. Should I be concerned about this? Well, I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm going to post the video, I'm going to grab a uh, one of these IPs and I'm going to show you how I investigate that one. So I grab that IP and I paste it into the free X Force exchange and I get information that this is a scanning IP and it's coming from Russia. Should I be concerned about that? You'll see that, that this is not a big deal. And actually I'm showing here the integration with VirusTotal. This is a separate video. And as you know, the in the video description of all my videos, there's a public box folder where you'll find a PDF with the links to all my videos. So, again, why is it that this is not a concern? Well, let's take a look at, uh, and that's another beautiful thing about the flows, is that not only they have a source of destination poor, application, all the stuff, but source by destination by. Has any traffic is actually been going out there. So notice that the source, the attempt, is coming with 46, nothing back. 52, nothing back. Why is that? Well, as we saw here, this IP is a scanning IP. And the Russians and the Iranians and Chinese and whoever wants do this all the time. Why? Because they can and they want to scan our networks to find ports that are open. So this is a case of uh, port scanning. You're not going to get that for any logs, typically. You're not going to get that. But you get that automatically from the flows. But also the fact that the destination IP, the destination bytes, rather, is uh, uh, small, is really 
is zero is actually telling you that there's no actual traffic. There is some real traffic in here. Let me actually show you. So I have opened one of those that is actually uh, showing it bytes are not zero. And this is actually that I did as a test. In, in one of my machine, I went to this IP, which is 52472092216, which is portquiz.net. It's something that you can use to test your uh, your uh, this, your uh, the RDP connections and other. So this is this is not malicious, and actually you I can, you can do the same. You can grab this, go to that, and investigate that, and you see that that is not malicious. But let's say that you 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 don't want to be doing searches. This curator is can do searches, but it's a great tool to have offenses to fire. And and most of the rest of the video series will be about where you get the rules already built for you. But notice that you can do a couple of things in here. For first of all, because this is something that I did from the inside of one of my VMs going out to this uh, site in France, the context is local to remote. And the port is this one. And the destination byte is different from zero. So right there, we can actually build a simple rule on flows if we wanted to detect traffic that will be actually the other way around. So let's say that I'm, I'm more interested in somebody going via RDP into one of my systems and extracting information. So let's actually go into the rules and build a simple one for the sake of showing you how easy that is. So I'm here, I click here on the offenses, rules, and I'm gonna, as the action, I'm gonna create a flow rule. So here are only the test conditions that are valid for the uh, flow rule. So uh, what I want to do is I want to uh, make sure that the source of destination is going to be that port used for RDP 3389. So I add that, I submit that, and that first condition it is, but not all the traffic. So let's say that I'm interested on the stuff coming in from the outside in, not the inside out, or, or maybe you, you, if you are, if you want them both, you can put both conditions. But uh, if I search here for the word context, and you get the flow content is this context. What is it that you want? I want from the outside in, remote to local, right? So I add that, and if you want more, you can add another one there. So. Now I'm looking at RDP traffic coming in. And let's say that I want to make sure that there's some traffic actually going on because it's not the ping. I, I don't want this to fire on false positive with the pin. So uh, let me look for the number of bytes. So if I type here bytes, I see when the source byte is greater than, for example, zero, right? And my friends, you had built yourself a rule that will fire and you need to you know, give it a name and make sure that you enable it to fire offenses. But this is a simple way of, of really looking for, hey, I want to investigate any traffic. Who is actually using RDP from the outside in into my systems? So should you be interested about other investigating, other exploit, other vulnerabilities, and those are specific to a particular protocol, a port? Well, now you know how you can easily search for those. I'm scratching the surface. This is the introductory video. In the next uh, videos, we're going to be talking about how you get offenses. You don't want to build these offenses yourself. How you get them built by IBM and other uh, vendors. How you get those and how you smart look for them because there are so very many that it's not trivial to actually search for them.